Oh, I didn't see you come in there. Welcome to Thack Ironworks. <laughs> Sorry for that one. Anyway, welcome. Uh, today we are making another chess piece and today we are doing a vulture head. Uh, so, a couple weeks ago, probably like a month and a half ago, I started experimenting, came up with this guy here, which I was quite pleased with the personality on. I was just kind of messing around, but uh, went for kind of a cartoony head out the back there and ended up with almost a flamingo shape. So when I look at that, it's kind of interesting shape, but think about it, does it fit my mandate for design, which is, is it badass? No, it's not badass, but vulture, yes. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer to this saucy fellow here. And I think that is gonna be what I'm kind of aiming for, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna nail down uh, anatomical detail too closely on this one. I'm mean, gonna just kind of stick with it. So while we're talking about badass, I think when you as my viewer, when you're making decisions, always do what I do. Use the W, T, C, T, B, A rule was wood, back, consider, this bad ass. So W T C T B A. Every decision you make, always uh, follow that criteria, and you should go. Everything should go swimmingly for you. So let's begin. All right. So we begin with the beat. I'm just drawing out a point. Square taper. Do a couple of hammer blows, and then I rotate it. Quarter turn. And I've noticed looking at my pitcher, it's got a pretty sharp point on the beak, so I want to get a pretty good point. Whenever you're drawing out, you always draw out a square shape first. You have control of two planes that way. You can always control that shape very easily. Then you can always round it out or turn it into whatever cross section you need. So There we go. I think that's about the right taper. Now I'm going to start knocking the corners off of there. Okay, round that out. I'm just gonna do my bend now, I guess. All right, here we go. I hope. Realizing how the last time I did this, I didn't put the point on first, so now I'm kind of stuck here. All right, spitballing. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it like that. I'm gonna have to get some extra heat on here and see if I can just bring that back a slight bit. Okay, so now, hopefully you can see make out what I'm doing here. I'm kind of doing a glancing blow off the top of the head here to try to create a reach out the back. I'm going to do that without destroying things too much. Okay, I think that might be okay. Now, come down this way. all about getting enough leverage on there to make that go in the right direction. Always a tricky process. I'm just going to curl under the beak there. I don't know that I'm totally crazy about this shape, but 
what I don't like is the gap in here, which I could actually just come in with a MIG and fill that in, but I think we'll just leave it for now. We're just kind of experimenting. I don't want to get too stressed out about every detail on this whole chest set here. This is about experimenting with um, sculptural blacksmithing, so, so be it. That's what it's going to be. Now, I'm going to grab my reference here, and it looks like the beak sheath up there, where the nostrils are, starts up quite far. So I'm going to, I'm just coming in with a slightly curved, dull chisel. Just want to get that started on each side there. Trying to do each side around the same time so I kind of get a symmetry. Crikey! I think I am going to position my eye at this point. I'm going to do a double bird's eye on this one. Okay, so I got the big bird's eye done now. Now I'm gonna go in with a smaller one and carefully. Tricky. That in there. And this, the double bird's eye gives it a real um, stark contrast there. It's like eyeliner basically is what we're doing for this guy. So it makes it for those piercing eagle type eyes. Badass. And while we're at it, I think I'm going to come in with a center punch. And do the pupil. Just for shits and giggles, make this dramatic. Okay. I think we'll be moving to the vise next so we can get some more definition on this. One more thing I would like to do on the anvil, sharpen up the cheeks. All right, I'm gonna make an executive decision here and I decided I'm gonna go in with a MIG welder and just fill this in. This little crack in here is throwing off my uh, aesthetics. So if you're a purist and don't like that, then well, you're gonna have to deal with that little bit of uh, anachronism here so I'll be right back okay so uh, just went in with the MIG while it was still red hot and uh, it just everything just sinks in really nicely with that so I was able to just kind of fill in that um, under the neck cavity there now so I'm gonna just get another heat on here and kind of sculpt out the throat of this thing and then I think we'll move to the vise and do some refining of shape We're gonna go to the vise. Now I'm just trying to get some frowny brows on this guy here. So, 
coming in with a ball peen. Okay. Ouch! Does that amuse you? Yes. Okay, very cold. Let's get it hot again. That's better. All right. Eric and I said we wouldn't get too carried away on this one, so maybe I'm just gonna call it at that. And you just shine it up here so you get a beauty shot. I'm not gonna bother to put the base on this one because we're making a whole pile more of these. Um, in a future video, you'll get to see me putting this one on a base along with another one. We'll just do a couple at a time. That sort of thing, but here we go. Another piece in the chest set. I'm not too upset with uh, how that came out. It's a pretty interesting shape. I'd, I'd love to do a bunch more and, and kind of refine my process, but looking good, so that's it. Back out, see ya!